Lithium-ion batteries need to be kept within an optimal temperature range in order to operate efficiently and maximize their lifespan. If the temperature is too high, this can lead to loss of capacity, power fade, and, in extreme cases, thermal runaway. On the other hand, if they're too cold, this results in higher resistance, lower efficiency, and decreased available capacity. Low temperatures can also lead to increased lithium plating, which can cause accelerated degradation and failure of the cell. Thermal management aims to provide a balance between degradation and performance, and also ensures safe operation. There are several ways to cool a lithium-ion cell. Standard cooling systems use either air or liquid as the cooling medium, delivered either to the surface of the cell or to the cell tabs. Air has the advantage of being cheaper and simpler to implement, but it is less efficient than a liquid coolant. Our study compared cell surface and cell tab cooling, measuring efficiency and degradation over the lifetime of the battery. Three rigs were built, an air-cooled control rig and two custom-built liquid-cooled rigs. The liquid-cooled rigs consisted of the test cell itself, along with fluid-cooled heat sinks coupled to either the cell surface or cell tabs via Peltier elements. The Peltier elements were used to hold the temperature at the cell surface or cell tabs accurately at 20 degrees Celsius. In order to simulate a lifetime of cell operation, the cells were charged and discharged a thousand times. This was repeated three times. The state of the cells was characterized at 50 cycle intervals. For new cells, using slow-rate standardized testing, very little difference between the cooling methods was seen. However, at higher rates, when discharging the cell in just 10 minutes, surface cooling led to a loss of usable capacity of 9.2%, compared with just 1.2% for cell tab cooling. After cycling the cells a thousand times, the rate of loss of usable capacity under load was three times higher for surface cooling compared to cell tab cooling. A cell is made of many layers in a pouch to provide a given capacity. When surface cooling, the layers near the outside are cooled better than those in the middle. As all of the layers are electrically in parallel, the inner layers get hot and stay hot, and therefore provide most of the current at the beginning. Towards the end of discharge, the outer layers are now having to provide most of the current, but they're cold, and therefore hit the voltage cutoff sooner. Furthermore, the higher currents flowing through each layer one after another cause accelerated degradation. For tab cooling, since all the layers are treated the same and provide the same current for the whole discharge, the cell behaves much more homogeneously. For tab cooling, the layers are united, whereas for surface cooling, divided they fall. In automotive applications, 80% capacity is considered to be the end of a battery pack's useful life. In this situation, using tab cooling rather than surface cooling would be equivalent to extending the lifetime of a pack by three times, or reducing the lifetime cost by 66%.